Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent. Let's continue with our faction videos. Today we're discussing the Emerald Enclave, which my Adventure League group has dubbed the Hippie Commune. The Emerald Enclave is a group of druids and rangers that aim to protect the balance between nature and civilization. They believe that the natural order must be respected and preserved. Thus, they are against people, monsters, or organizations that upset the natural balance. Undead fall into this category, and thus necromancers are considered enemies of the Emerald Enclave. Nature is difficult, it's harsh, and it's savage. The Enclave strives to help others survive it. They will train and aid others to survive a harsh winter or long treks through the jungle. They'll offer their support and knowledge in hunting to those people that deserve their help. One of their main goals is to help others survive the many perils of the wild. This extends to civilization too. The Emerald Enclave has been known to fight against encroaching orc tribes that threaten nearby villages. One might think that being one with nature, they are opposed to civilization, but they are not. Their goal is to preserve the balance between between the two. They also wish to keep the elemental forces in check, keeping the powers of the elemental chaos from devouring Faerun, all part of their plan to prevent the wilderness and civilization from wiping out one another. The organization is spread across Faerun. Founded in 374 DR on the island of Illigon, by a group of rangers and druids. This particular island is one of two that make up the Eyes of Sylvanus, which lie in the Sea of Fallen Stars, the other being the island of Wavecrest. There are reefs and also magic that protects the island, magic from the Emerald Enclave. This protects the island from pirates. Geographically, these islands are more central Faerun, away from the Sword Coast. The Sea of Fallen Stars is known as the Inner Sea and is the largest inland body of water in Faerun. Now, the Emerald Enclave originally stayed on their island, preserving nature and doing good. After a while, they begin to concern themselves with the preservation of nature throughout all of Faerun. To facilitate this, they started smaller groups of the Emerald Enclave and spread them out across Faerun. They went to specific areas that the Enclave felt might be threatened, such as the High Forest, Cormanther, and Weldath. When I say smaller groups, groups, I do mean only a few people who were sent out to keep an eye on those particular areas. Then the spell plague hit. The druids did not know how to interact with this oddly changing world of spell scars and blue fire. The Sea of Fallen Stars shrunk, it retreated into the Underdark, and the small island of Illigon was now part of the mainland Termish. Termish is a nation of mercantile cities ruled by an organization known as the Assembly of Stars. The Emerald Enclave helped the Termish and have taken credit for the rebirth of Termish agriculture. From the 4th edition campaign guide, as years became decades, their original mission slowly perverted from one of respect for guardianship of nature to a vain struggle against forces far beyond their control. The Enclave attempted to aid the world by sending agents to the Plague Lands to stop the Spell Scarred and Blue Fire from ripping the world apart. This had little effect on the Spell Plague as a whole, it was just too powerful and misunderstood. Still, the Enclave held a burning hatred for the Spell Plague and the Spell Scarred. Then in 1486 DR, the Enclave was revitalized. The great rains that happened during the Sundering refilled the Sea of Fallen Stars. Illigon was a island once more. The Emerald Enclave organized themselves and joined other factions to help put a stop to some evil threats to Faerun, specifically the Cult of the Dragon. Many of the Emerald Enclave members follow good aligned deities, nature deities such as Eldath, Maliki, and Sylvanas. Although to join the Emerald Enclave, you are required to serve neither good nor evil. If you have a neutral character, the Emerald Enclave is for them. They strive to preserve the balance rather than outright stop evil. Their actions can be seen as good because they do detest evil like undeath, but overall the Enclave tries to preserve the balance. In order to become a part of the Emerald Enclave, you must perform at least one act that benefited nature in the Vihon Reach area. This is an area containing the island of Illigon, which this must have changed since the early days of D&D. Because with Adventure League, I'm pretty sure you can just join the Emerald Enclave as long as your motivations sync up. So perhaps this is an old requirement, or we just assume new recruits have already done this good deed in the Vihon Reach area. To outsiders, the Emerald Enclave looks like a Druid Circle. But really, it's more of a loose confederation of circles and their allies. Its members include druids, rangers, barbarians, and others who live in the wilderness respecting its ways. You know someone from the Emerald Enclave by the emerald green clothing they wear. This could be anything, but represents the Enclave and openly displays their membership. Druids in the north often ally with harpers, which is an odd exception, but the harpers are a large influence in the north. The Emerald Enclave and the Harpers get along for the most part, but there are some in the Enclave that dislike the Harpers, saying their meddling threatens the natural balance of things, almost as much as the evils they fight against. I think you could be a nature cleric that follows the Emerald Enclave, as well as a totem barbarian. There's really cool roleplay potential with this faction. And that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoy this look at the Emerald Enclave. I'll be back next week with another faction. Please hit like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe, and consider sharing it with a friend. Take care, everybody.